business cards. I have to keep a lot of them for all the references, and I usually keep them in stacks like this, and then at the end of five years, start weeding them out. And every trade fair I go to, I, I, I have to take a business card home. Sometimes there's ones more durable when I put them into albums with people I've got a long-term relationship with, and uh, rather like stamp albums, but these ones are ones I keep a little bit longer. But that's how business cards are kept. I've become aware, though, over the years that there are business cards and calling cards, which are a little more interesting. And for these, I've really felt I, I should keep them for, for good forever. And these are my core collection of novelty business cards, novelty calling cards. And they've all got something very quirky about them. Here's the first section of, well, the material they're made of. For instance, this guy, a lovely octogenarian at the Nuremberg Toy Fair, makes wooden toys. He's done it all his life. So this is a piece of wood. And he's made his business card from it. How appropriate, how appropriate and sensible. These people make leather goods. So their card is made, it's quite difficult to read actually, but that's leather. It shows the material they're making it from. A wonderful fabrication for metal. This one here has been cut by laser, and that's stainless steel. And to show it's steel, I'll show another card which a company makes magnetic plastic. This is magnetic plastic, but it'll now pick up the steel because it's magnetized. Wonderful, both of those cards are relevant to the businesses that are being pursued. When I was at a boarding school, I used to have my name, my name tag put on every bit of my article of clothing, and cashes have been doing it for decades in, in, in England. This is a woven card. It's been woven exactly how they make their tapes to show their, their artwork. And if a company is making this curious form of plastic, and it's a very, very hard but durable plastic, they make the card off the material to show you, can, to show you what, it's, what it feels like, the, the, the product they're making. That's sensible. And one which will change colour with the heat of the hand. It's got a bit hot in here, so I don't think it will change much now. But it's one of those ones which changes to greens and blues to reds, and it's made of that material. It'll, it'll display it. And a beautiful one from Hong Kong, of one that makes lenticulation. And when you move this up and down, it's just a business card. It's got all the detail in it, but look at the action you're getting from that. Superb. And then I put it into my wallet when I first received it, with great joy, because it was a business card. And the last two, this company makes these little sachets with shampoos and things, so <laughs> their business card contained liquid in it. I think it's dried out now, probably. But it's a completely self-contained cell with the business details and an example of their work for it. And this funny little company sold those pa packets of these bubble plastics for children's parties, so their business card with the details on the back had the bubble, bubble plastic on the front, so you can go pop, 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 pop. So that's one, the first section of cards which are utterly relevant to whatever they're making. Another section are ones where they've got what, they, what, those, what service they're giving on the back. This one, for instance, makes micromap, so that's an example of what they do. There's a micromap of central London with the Thames running through. That's a lovely example of it. The bog standard one of these, which I've done for decades, I think it is, is the printer who, for something cheerful like a a calendar on the back, 1998 this was, but it's quite common to have a, a calendar on the back of a business card, and helpful too. If you're a card maker and there's people make playing cards, then it's a, a quirky idea to put a game of poker on the back with the rules to it and scoring. And a friend of mine from Boston who makes dice, beautiful set of dice, bothers to put a little dice game on the back. It tells you how to play a game of dice, out of many. Well, Christmas Lanker, a, bit, a, a puzzle friend of mine, <laughs> He's got nothing on the back of this one, but he shows a nice little puzzle on the front where you have to solve the puzzle here. And also these ones, which are magic eyes, are two examples of it. These are working magic eyes, and they give the detail on the back of the company. But these are magic eyes where you have to get your eyes parallel and you get three-dimensional appearances. And the last one is a French company which produced for their business card this, you had to put little bits of, of string on it, but it was a thaumatrope when it spun round you spun it fast, you got the, you got the bird appearing in the cage. But it was a business card. So these are all relevant to what they're producing. I like these ideas. Another little genre would be very humorous ones. This one is very silly, but it's, it's, to me it was quite, quite funny. Um, and of course it was tongue in the cheek. It wasn't any retired. But this one is even better. This is called inverse advertising. It's a hospital I stayed for in Devon that says, lousy this, lousy that, and don't ring so-and-so, but actually it's a very pleasant place to stay in. <laughs> Inverse mechanism of advertising. 
The last section, which I think is my favourite, has wonderful cards where they really take, sometimes take your breath away. This one, for instance, they make office equipment, and it's a pop-up card. I've got several of these, but this is the best of them, but a lot. As you open it up, you get this wonderful action of various office equipment performing their functions. Superb. And another one I've just got recently talks about cutting edge of media and marketing. <laughs> it's like a razor blade. It's not sharp, of course, but it's actually made of stainless steel and acts as a business card. Wonderful idea. Another one has a tape on the back, a record, so you can play this. I've never tried doing it. I need equipment for it, but it would have lots of details on it. But it's at the same time a business card. And a magician who I know does a lot of card tricks. So on the back of his card, of course, he has to have the bicycle deck, the most famous of all the, of all the magic cards on the back of his card. This one here is like a magic trick. A friend of mine who was helping the exploratory in Bristol, and you're, it's already pre-cut, and when you turn it like that and put it on the table, you're asked to try and work out how that was made, because it's got this curious property that it's fixed there, but it's not fixed there. It's very strange. Well, the answer is it's a twist like that. You do a twisting action like that, and it immediately becomes obvious what's happened. But to make a business card like that, I think it's brilliant. Even better was this one here, which is, just says how, question mark. This is a design company in the West End of London. This one has got thermochromic ink, so when you warm it in your hands, I've got quite warm hands, almost immediately it starts changing colour, and a bit more, and then suddenly that message how becomes clear. How are you, it asks. It's a bit faint, I think, the actual details of the persons of the designer, but it's, it's, it's readable, and a nice idea. And when you put it back on a cold surface on the table, it will eventually go back to black again. A magician, a friend of mine who I stay with in New York, has got a marvellous card. It's black all the way around, but in it, it says his name is Mark Settler McCarty, all in mirror writing. But hang on, there's the mirror. So if I hold it up like this, I should be able to get you to read his name, Mark Settler McCarty, and he's a magician based in New York. What a wonderful idea. A guy called Scott Kim does inversions, that's his business card, and it says Scott Kim this way, and it's inversions, which is what he's famous for, that way. And when he was approached by another magician up in Scotland, whose name was Douglas Cameron, he did something very clever. I think Douglas Cameron had the original idea for this, but uh, Scott Kim actually produced it for him. Douglas Cameron, magician out of Glasgow, and his profession is, he turns upside down and back to front, magician, M-A-G-I-C-I-A-N. So the middle of this word here, when it's upside down and back to front, spells his profession. What an incredible idea. This one is produced by some card people. It looks a bit dubious to me, but actually when you turn it around, huh, they're looking at cards and another magician's card. One I had for many years ago, my own card, this was, was one where you sign the, get this person to sign the card, and when you finished signing the card on the top left-hand corner, there's a little bird sitting outside, it says, a fun to be fooled. You pull it out, give it to the person, and when they looked at it, they saw my name, but when they turned it over, the bird had gone inside the cage. Beautiful little trick to play on people. And the latest card I've got, which I've had a lot of fun with, is this peculiar thing here, which is anamorphic. That is to say, on both sides, you have to hold it up to eye level, and then you can read Tim Rowe at the time in a long stretch letters there. Telephone number, address, website, Grand Illusion is all there like that. So my plea is to people to find interesting ways of doing things with business cards. Even when they're finished, you can do interesting things. These American business cards, for instance, which are a certain size, seven by four. And when you do that, you can weave them into this sort of thing. So you don't need to throw them away. So I had to do a talk once on my business club about business cards, and my plea was try and be more inventive with the business cards you've got and see if you can get more customers. Try, try to make them as unthrowawayable as possible. These ones I have to throw away because after five years they're finished, but these ones I can't throw away. They're, they're, they're too interesting. They've got some very, very clever ideas. Mm -hmm.